All right, welcome back everybody. I believe we're up to video of the Blue Nose build 33. Uh, first off, I want to thank everybody that uh, sent me comments and, and a little wishing me happy holidays and all that kind of stuff. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, and I hope everybody had a good holiday and got some nice toys. So, uh, I changed the room around a little bit, so my desk is no longer right here, it is over there. I, I, over the holidays period, I moved the whole room around, got everything switched around. The wife, she wanted her art table in front of the window, so I uh, obliged her with that. But, uh, you know, with all the running and, and, and the holidays and everything in the past two weeks, I didn't get as much time on it as I wanted to, but I'm about, I would say, 90% done with the standing rigging. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera around here in just a minute and, and show you where I'm at. And uh, at the end of this video, I've got a, a, a clip. I don't know what it is. I don't remember. I shot it a few days ago, probably 11, 12 minutes long or something, on how I stepped my mask. And we're going to talk about that when I get over here to the ship, how I step my mask. But uh, I'm moving right along. I, I, I'm, I'm to the point now, uh, you know, this week coming up, I'll have all my standing rigging done. And then i got to start on the sails. <laughs> so i got to dig out the sewing machine and give myself a crash course on how to sew. So... With all that being said, let's go ahead and let's get the camera turned around. Like I said, you know, in, in a two-week period, I should have been a lot more advanced and further along than what I am. But it is what it is, you know. I got to spend time with the family and uh, and the holidays and all that. So let's get the camera turned around and uh, take a good look at this thing. All right. Uh, <clears throat> before I continue on with the ship behind me. Now, I have to apologize for the uh, some of the lighting and the way it's set up. Like I like I mentioned before, I switched the whole room around. I had all my lighting set up for the other side, <clears throat> and I had that window there which gave me light. Now I'm over here, so I'm gonna have to work on my lighting and get get everything set back up. So uh, the lighting in this uh, video isn't gonna be too good. I, I apologize for that. But uh, it's Saturday afternoon. The football playoffs had started. I got to get in the other room. So I'm throwing this video together real fast because I always put it up on Sunday morning. So uh, I didn't have time to reshoot everything, try to get better lighting for you. I will do that in the next video, I promise. I'll try to have better lighting. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and... Uh, get into where I let off okay well here she is um, still got a few things to do to her yet uh, but as you can see most of my uh, standing rigging is finished uh, I, I, I got everything that I could do to keep the mast square to where I wanted them okay um, if you can see and I'll be zooming in on this in a little bit but I've got eight of my um, little dead eyes finished two on there two there and two on the other side so really the only thing I got left to do is three six nine twelve more dead eyes to hook up but I wanted to get these two on here because they're pulling mostly to the back for that mast. So um, that's pretty much, you know, I, if you can see, I got my uh, spring stays up on the top. That'd be this this area up in here. Got that done. Uh, got all the ones hooked up to the bow sprint. And you can see. By me moving over to this other side of the room, it, it has screwed up all my lighting. So I'm going to have to 
to work on this a little bit to get my lighting a little bit better for you. Uh, I got one problem I don't understand, but I, I kind of I, I, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I can understand why they're doing it that way, but at the same time, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I'll show you what that is here in a second once I zoom in. It has to do with this back here, back here on this main boom. So let me uh, reset the camera and the ship and zoom in on this area and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the first thing I discovered is I've got this hooked up wrong back here. And I know it looks like a mess right now, but there is, let me raise it up a little bit, three sets of block and tackle back here. There's a set coming down over to this side, one on the other side, and then the big one right in the center of the boom, down to the center of the ship. All right. Well, after looking at some pictures and seeing how it works, if you're going to put your sails on, this set of block and tackle on this side and the one on the other side comes off. If you have your sails on, the only block and tackle that is hooked up is the one in the center. It goes from here down to the uh, little boom thing there. I forget what they call it, buffer boom or something like that in the center. So I have to remove these other two sets of block and tackle. And I will probably shorten them up a little bit and just lay them on the deck. I believe they're only there when you have the boom down in a stationary position and basically you're just tying it off. So I have to change that. Now here's something I really don't understand but with this, if you're under sail, if you can see this you've only got this very short area right between these two backstays for this boom to travel and I've seen pictures where this boom is is way out over to the side when she's sailing but I can understand that with a block and tackle on it you can loosen up this line and allow that boom to go out so I guess that's why that block and tackle is set up on there like that because it's no, there's no block and tackle on any other stay that I have. You do have dead eyes on the shrouds, which is sort of a stay. But, you know, I guess that's the only way they could do this, to have, you know, a back stay on it. So if you follow me, what I'm saying is, if this was, if this was under sail, your sail is only going to fit in this one little narrow area all the way up. So I guess they, like I said, I guess they would unloosen one side, whichever way the, the boom is on, loosen up one side and allow that boom to travel out. Uh, but that's the way she shows on the plans. So that's what I went ahead and done. But that was the only thing that had me stumped, you know. And you can see I got little, it's getting dusty. Got little fuzzies all over it. I'm going to have to give it a good cleaning when I get done. And you can see I got string laying all over that. This string here is to this pulley which works this contraption. And I, I got to get all these strings. I just got them laying all over the deck right now. And once I, I get them blade off then I can start trimming them. But right now all this string is just laying on the deck until I get ready to start tying stuff off. Alright. Now, let's talk a little bit. Let me see if I can get the camera reset. Let's talk a little bit about these masts. Okay, let me back out. Back out. Okay, you'll see coming up in, in, at the end of this video uh, how I step my mast. Now, I watched quite a few guys on the internet who don't use any glue when they set their mask. They just set them down in there and then use all their uh, rigging line to set their mask. 
And it even tells you that in the directions to do not glue them mast in in case you have future repair on the ship, it says. Well, I've watched a lot of video on how they, how they step a mast on a real ship. And that's what a lot of these guys are doing. They're following the tradition of building their model the way the guys do in real life. Okay? And, and I really admire them for that. But when I watch the videos of how they actually do a real mast, they will set a mast down into the deck with a crane or back in the old days with some type of A-frame system set up. And they will set that mast down into the deck and then drive wedges around it, okay, to get it into its position. Well, I wasn't fortunate enough to have enough room, especially in here, to put little wedges in there to get my mast into the position it needed to be before I could start tying off my rigging. And another thing is, in real life, once they get their mast set, they'll have a half a dozen deckhands running around and start tying off shrouds and, and, and other rigging. And I'm not that fortunate. I'm the only deckhand here. So with that being said, I went ahead and glued my mast in. And I got them set to where they needed to be and let them sit there for about a day before I came back in here and messed with it. But now, you know, if that's a big no-no and a lot of guys are saying, oh, I build... I've been building for 40 years, you know, I've never glued them in. Well, I did, you know. It worked easier for me to do that. Because without having them little wedges in there to hold that mast, you're over here trying to put a shroud line on to pull that mast this way, and then when you got to go put the other one, then it's all, you know, it just, it seemed to be more trouble than it was worth for me. So I went ahead and glued my mast in, and then I started tying off my back stays. All right. And uh, these, all these lines are nice and tight, you know. So everything worked out pretty good doing it that way. And you'll see I got a lean to it, and that's explained coming up in the video. All right. And this tape right here is just holding them rings up out of the way for me. So next thing I got to do is, is go ahead and finish up all my uh, standing rigging. I'll get that done. Start belaying off some of these lines. Uh, I got to get my perils on here yet. And then I'm going to work on these booms. Okay. Try to get them just hanging there, get them in the position. So she's coming along. Um... I think she's looking pretty good, you know. I just, I just had a little trouble trying to understand this back here, because that boom, that boom is going to be up in here. Let me see if I can. You're probably not seeing that. That boom up here is going to be in a position where it's between these two lines. And there's not a lot of play in it, back and forth, side to side. But like I said, I guess that's why they got that block and tackle down there. So you can let your boom go over and loosen up that line so it's got room to travel. Seems like a funny setup to me, but I didn't build her. I'm just making the model of her. Okay. Um, oh, here. I wanted to show you this my dead eyes all right let me zoom in here a little bit all right you can see I'm working on my dead eyes and what I've got here is a little jig all right let me turn this lens around so I can see what you're seeing if that does any better I got this little jig I made, all right, and it's basically got four brass nails. I drilled a little hole, pushed them brass nails through, super glued them in there, and 
that's my jig for my uh, dead eyes. I will take one dead eye, put it on the top here, set that dead eye on the top, take my jig over here, put the other dead eye down here on the bottom in the two bottom holes, and then that gives me my space. And then I'll stretch my shroud line around that top dead eye, tie it off, and then I can pull this out, and then I can stretch it down to, to where it's level with the other ones, and then do my um, lanyard right there, so that they will all come out in the same position. All right, so you got to make yourself one that make yourself a little jig of some type. All right, that one's mine. I used that actually. I used that one on the bounty, and it's basically the same distance. That pretty much matches up with the distance they have on the plans, and uh, works out real good. Neat little trick. Okay, but I still got a lot of little things to do. I got to go around. I still got to work on this little ship here. Um, little 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 things I gotta touch up here and there that I haven't got to yet and every time I think I've got all my block and tackle on let me see here let's see if I can get the bow here hold on let me back it up a little bit I thought I had the bow sprint all done and I'm looking at the plans and then all of a sudden I see, oh no, there's two more little blocks. One there and one there. And you can see i got these little rings on here. These are for my uh, sails. Okay. They'll get spread out all the way up and down that main that sail. I think that the sail up here starts around this area. And then these are for the next sail. And then there's some more over here for the next sail. Okay. And I just went over to Hobby Lobby. And I bought me a pack of these. Where are they at? Right there. Pack of them. They're sort of a, a real dark, deep copper color. I looked for some black ones, couldn't find them, but I think that looks just as good. It, it almost matches the same color as the bigger rings. The bigger rings right there. So... But I wanted to make sure I had them on, so when I go to tie my sails off onto them lines, I'm not trying to, uh, I mean, they got some, they got a different method that they tell you to use, but I thought them rings would work just fine. Just tie my sail right off to them rings. Okay, so, watch the uh, little short clip coming up on how I step my mask, and remember, you know, remember this. <laughs> It, all kinds of guys have got all kinds of ways you know but this is the way I done it and it came it came out good you know I'm really pleased with it everything's uh, still lined up the way it was when I set them in there and um, she's good and solid let me see I know this is crazy but there you go She's good and solid, and she's not, you know, not loose or nothing. But, uh, you know, I'll probably get a couple comments on that. Well, you know, that ain't the right way to do it. You shouldn't go. Well, I figure, you know, what's the magazine or the direction say that if you got, um, if you're going to have to do repair? Well, the only kind of repair I can see that it would matter if you glued them in there or not is if the mask gets broke off okay well then what I would do is come in and saw it off down close to the bottom and take a drill and just drill it out <coughs> I mean it makes sense not to glue it in there but I just you know being my second model I didn't want to make it any more difficult on myself than I had to working on it by myself you know I, I just thought I'm gonna glue mine in there I glued them in so send me to, to Davy Jones locker for doing that I don't know but it not only helped me in doing my rigging but it also gave a little bit more stability to the ship by doing that okay here comes my little clip and uh, that'll be it for this week
Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is how I'm going to go about stepping my main mast. Now the same principle would be employed for my foremast, okay? So, I got my mast just sitting in there right now. And I'm basically going to use two methods. I'm going to use uh, a little bit of common sense with some geometry and then I'm going to use my plain old eyeballs. The eyes are what's going to tell because that's what everybody else is going to see. So here's how I'm going about doing this. I'm trying to make sure I got my mask at a 90 degree angle this way and it's it's leaning back this way towards the rear of the ship just a little bit the plans I think I might have said this it's got about a two degree lean in it and it just so happens that the way my hole is drilled if I push back on this that gives me that two degree angle so I'm not so much worried about it from front to back what I am worried about it is from side to side and making sure she ain't twisted. What I'm doing is getting above it, looking down and taking that cross T and lining it up with something on the deck which just happens to be this step here. And making sure that that cross T looks parallel to that step. So I know she ain't twisted. Alright, so I can see right now what I've got here is a little turnbuckle that I made and I got it tied off to a piece of string and I'm using this as a plumb bob alright and I got it taped up there onto my cross tee and what I can see right off the bat is that that piece of string up above here is about one inch from the edge of that mass to that string and I come down here and it's about three quarters of an inch off or should I say, yeah, no, it's about, it's a little over a quarter inch off, I'm sorry, all right, so by looking at that string, I can right away see that that mast is leaning that way, all right, so I tried a couple different methods here, and uh, let me get a little closer for you, I tried a couple different methods, first thing I did was take this ruler and lay that ruler on there, and try and get it straight with that mast. Well, you can't do that. Because even though it's a, a small ruler, this deck is pitched from side to side. So right off the bat, that ruler is leaning towards the side of the ship. So that won't work. Okay? And this is pretty much the same thing. That won't work either. I tried messing with this a little bit. Alright? I've got nothing to set it on. To get a good measurement so first thing I had to do is make sure my ship was level all right and what I've got here is a little small level that uh, I believe bricklayers use one of these a little small level and I laid it on my desk and pretty much determined that my desk is, is fairly level then I took this nice little stiff roller and laid it on my cradle here and determined that that was pretty level. Then I got up here to my deck and I found out I was off a little bit. And I'll show you how. So my ship wasn't in the cradle just right. So what I had to do was take a plastic ruler and put it in between my cradle and my ship and that cocked it over just enough to give me back to level. And here's how I found that. I took this protractor laid it on here from rail to rail making sure I'm not on top of any dead eyes or anything it's from rail to rail and I took this little level and laid it on there and got that level so that protractor is, is level with the earth so then what I done was I lost my pointer here it is so then what I did was I eyeballed it. Let me, you can see the back of my head here a second. And it's pretty much dead on right now. 
I eyeballed it to where this line right here, which is in line with that 90 degrees up here, by eyeballing it to the center of that mast. And then I came up here and I seen that I had to pull this over ever so slightly to get that line in the center of the mast up there. Now that mast should be perpendicular to that ship. And by doing this, it also takes my string, which I said was an inch away up here from the edge of the mast to the string. Down here, if I lay that roller or if I look at it, it's one inch plus half the distance of that mast. And that's where that will wind up at. Okay? But what's going to happen is it's, it's going to come down to the eye. What, it, you know, once I get this done and get it set, does it look good to the eye? And then I'm going to, like I said, employ the same method up on my foremast. And when I get that set, make sure that they are in line, that they're not cocked like this or like this. All right? Get them both centered, straightened out, and I think I, I'll be good going like that. But the eyes are going to be the ones that tell you. So let me get a little close up here for you. Okay. So it looks pretty good on the camera. That line looks like it's in the center of that mast and the top one right now is off by about a degree. So if I bring this over like that to the center of that mast, the plumb blob straightens up, gives me my measurement down here, the same as up here, and everything looks hunky-dory. So. You can see my little plumb bob. Like I said, just a little turnbuckle, an extra one that I had, and uh, I got it sitting just off of the just off of the deck. So I hope this works. I'm gonna go ahead and get both these mass mass stepped, and uh, we'll see what she looks like when I'm done. Okay, so here we are, and here I am. I got the camera set on the other side of the room, about halfway through the room, and uh, I've given you a shot right down the bow, right down across the uh, bow sprint here, right down the center of the ship, and you can see I got them both lined up. Now the camera might be off uh, just a hair, but when I step back and I look at it, they are both in perfect alignment. Uh, my plumb bob back here on this one, I referred to millimeters when I was doing it the second time, and I'm 25 millimeters off up here and 25 millimeters off down there. So the plumb bob line pretty much works. And then I just laid this in up here. I couldn't get this uh, protractor, compass, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't get it right up close to the mast because I got so much stuff right there but I was able to get it in here and lean it and it's leaning up against this one hatchway and when I put it in there I eyeballed it from behind to get them center lines and at 90 degree mark lined up and this one also is leaning towards the back a little bit but not as much if you could see the plans the main mast leans about two degrees and the foremast leans about one degree maybe a little bit more so they're not leaning together but they are leaning back and then what I done was I took a ruler and measured from the tip of this cross T to the tip of that cross T and made sure it was the same on both sides to get them in parallel with each other and then I eyeballed it from down above to make sure she was lined up so there you go, they're both set in the deck. Um, there's nothing I can do now until tomorrow, so I got the rest of the day off. But uh, I've got both of my mess, mess stepped.
I was worrying about this part, you know, I was, I was contemplating how I was going to do it and, and what I was going to do. But uh, she turned out all right. She, they're in there. They're not going nowhere now. All right. So she's looking good. Uh, that was a big part. Now from here on, it's just doing a bunch of rigging. And I still got to make my sales. I'm dreading that. All right, well, thanks for watching.